If you spent a lot of time scanning back in the day, then you've probably heard some strange things over the years. But when it comes to monitoring police officers chasing UFOs, well, that's another thing entirely. This story comes from Illinois in 1993, and don't worry, I'm not a believer in little green men landing on Earth, so stay tuned. There's also an interesting radio scanner related police sting from the UK at the end of this video as well. It was a hot summer's evening and a resident in the small town of Crenshaw Crossing was in his radio room listening to local scanner traffic when things suddenly began to turn bizarre. On 155.07 MHz, the Williamson County Sheriff's Office dispatch radioed her Zone 1 patrolman with an unusual request. She said, WC18, we have an unconfirmed report of a UFO at Crenshaw Crossing, will you check it out? With a note of scepticism in his voice, WC18 replied, 104 County, I'm at Burt Wilson Road, I'll be there in a couple of minutes. Crenshaw Crossing is a lonely, winding road that stretches across a moonscape of abandoned coal mine strip pits in rural southern Illinois. At night it's especially spooky, exactly the sort of place you might expect a flying saucer to choose as a clandestine landing site. Upon arriving at Crenshaw Crossing, the officer excitedly radioed his dispatcher, saying that he could see the UFO. Bewildered, all he could do was watch what was taking place before his eyes. He said on the radio, the UFO is 3,000 feet wide and 2,000 feet high and multicoloured. It looks like it's landing out in the strip pits. I'm going to try and get closer. Communications on the frequency went wild as state and city police joined the chase. An Illinois state trooper on 154.935 MHz said it's hovering 50 feet above the ground and is moving away from me. I'm in pursuit. Radio traffic was hot and heavy as officers raced after the saucer. About 15 minutes into the chase, the Williamson County Emergency Services and Disaster Agency came on 155.025 with a news flash. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, a division of NORAD, had just landlined ESDA and informed them that the UFO was in fact a Russian rocket booster re-entering the atmosphere from a polar orbit. The rocket contained substantial traces of fuel which had ionised upon hitting the Earth's atmosphere, producing a spectacular saucer-shaped light show. It took several more minutes for the news to filter out to all the agencies as well as mobile units. Some officers were still in hot pursuit of the UFO, while others were laughing at the absurd drama they'd participated in. Eventually, everyone got word that the planet was safe from an invasion of ETs, and things returned to their normal sleepy southern Illinois pace. How could trained professional police officers mistake a ball of ionised gas high in the upper atmosphere for a solid object so close that they actually thought it could be overtaken by their patrol cars? The answer, I suppose, lies in human psychology. When confronted with tense or unusual circumstances, a person can lose their objectivity and jump to unfounded conclusions. Then, group psychology takes over and the hysteria becomes epidemic. Anyway, I'm not a trained psychologist. Only about 5% of the 7,150 man-made orbiting objects that were tracked by the North American Aerospace Defence Command at this time were active satellites. The rest were just space junk, and just like today, they're coming our way. On average, one of these objects falls out of orbit every day. When people saw strange lights in the sky, they'd often turn on their scanner to check police, emergency preparedness, and NOAA weather channels. They also monitored the MUFON Amateur Radio Net for updates on UFO sightings. The frequencies for that were 3.929, 7.273 and 28.47 MHz. This rather absurd story got me thinking about another event that happened back in 1993 over here in the UK. I've covered the illegality of using radio scanners over here in the UK a couple of times on the channel and it always amazes my American viewers how this was ever enforced. As I said, we've spoke about this a lot and apart from a few occasions, well actually quite a few, it generally wasn't enforced. Back in the summer of 1993, around the time the Crenshaw Crossing incident took place, police in Appleton in Cheshire 
came up with a transmission that was designed to shock. They issued an all points bulletin over the air late one evening. The transmission said that a flying saucer had crashed and burned near the old Royal Navy station at Stretton. The police went to the site and camped out under the cover of darkness and sure enough no less than five people who hurried to the scene were arrested and charged with illegally monitoring police communications. Thank you.